Welcome to Fiber Chats. My name is Irene. I'm the host here. My guest today is a knitwear designer, Nancy Ritchie. Hi, Nancy. Hi, Irina. Thank yes. you so much for having me. Oh, thank you for being my guest. It was so wonderful to meet you at Walk Knitting. And one of the things that really blew my mind this time was Kaleidoscope Show. And ah. your design was part of that show. It was organized by Louis Boria, who is a Fiber Chat star, one of the first people I interviewed. So I watched a few fashion shows at Vogue, and that was the most memorable to me. One of the reasons was because it was so outside of the box. Like the designs were just like really pushing the boundaries of what's possible in the world of knitting. And another reason, because half of those people who were, whose designs were there were guests of my channel. So it was oh near gosh. and dear to my heart to see their designs. Tell me about your design. Tell me about what went into preparation for the show and how you felt during that show to see your design on that runway. Oh, it was it was really incredible. And um, I had been, this is the second time that I was involved in the show. I was one of the judges and I was also one of the mentors. And it was um, really an honor to uh, participate in that show. And I was so happy that Louis um, asked me again to participate because, um, you know, there are fashion shows uh, organized by Volknet Life, and oftentimes it's like really well-known fashion designers, and um, the Kaleidoscope Fashion Show. It doesn't matter if you're well-known or not well-known. If you have a design and you and you and you want to submit it, you can. And we don't care if you're known or well-known. If you have ever uh, designed before or never designed before, anybody that wants to show their creativity. And anybody that wants to be on, they 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 can try, and that's what I find so beautiful about the Kaleidoscope Fashion Show. Well, was it difficult to pick who is going to be on that runway? Very difficult. Um, so difficult that this time around, I asked them to take me out of the judging. In the first Kaleidoscope Kaleidoscope Fashion Show, I was I actively participated in choosing, picking and choosing who can be on the runway and who cannot. I had a really hard time with that, really hard time because all, all the people that sent in their designs, everybody did such a great job. It was so hard for me to pick. And um, I, I, the second time that they did it, as I said to Louis, Louis, please take me out of the judging because I have such a hard time. I, I I have a hard time saying to somebody, you know, your design cannot be on the runway. And we you have to choose because you cannot take everybody. I know I know we have to choose, but it's so it's so hard for me because um everybody's doing such a great job and it just breaks my heart if if we have to say to somebody, Oh, I'm sorry, we didn't we didn't pick you. I'm sure you could just fill out the entire Saturday there with the designs that have been submitted there and it would be absolutely wonderful. Yes, yes, because everybody does such a great job. Um, uh, beautiful sketches and um, very exciting, but we can only have a certain amount. Well, tell me about your design. What was the inspiration behind your design and what was the idea and how we're satisfied with how it came out? So um, I was very, very satisfied with how it came out. And the first thing that I said to Louis, when he asked me back to the Kaleidoscope Fashion Show, I said, Louis, I have only one request. My dear friend, my model friend, Lily Washington, I only have one request. I want her to walk from me. And if it's not possible, then it's okay. I will pull out. But there's this one thing I really want that my friend Lily Washington will walk the runway. And uh, Louis said, Nancy, no worries. Lily can walk for you on the runway show. We will make it happen. So basically, Lily was my uh, inspiration. My, my, 
my uh, she's my muse she is my all-time favorite muse uh, we are very good friends we have deep conversations about life about where we are from about our ancestors about what we are to do here in this life in this lifetime what our what we bring what we bring to this life what our um, what our gifts are and uh, and how we move how we move in this life so i have deep conversations with her and every time i have conversations with her i just want to wrap her in all of my knitwear you know i i i i see her walking and i'm thinking to myself oh she would be beautiful if she would wear this or this and I have made many, many items for her. So uh, Lily, Lily Washington, my dear friend, she was, she was my, uh, my, my biggest inspiration. I mean, she did a tremendous job walking that did. Uh, catwalk. You know, did. it was really memorable. Yeah, she did. She has, um, she has like a, um, a fierce energy. And not only that, she has also a soft energy and, um, it's a very kind, very kind human being with a beautiful soul. And we really connected. We connected heart to heart. And when uh, we were um, in, when we were backstage and she was about to uh, be on the runway, I touched my heart. I touched her heart and we looked at each other and, and there she went. And there she went. It was uh, fantastic. Beautiful, beautiful. Were you nervous at all? Very nervous. <laughs> Incredibly nervous. I was so nervous um, that the day of the show, I was like, oh my, I don't know how people will receive it. Will people like it? Will people not like it? You know, you get you get into that um, into that last moment feeling of, am I good enough? You know, is my work good enough? Will people respond to my work? So yeah, I was very, very nervous. And um, right before the show, um, the indie dyer Lindsay from Five Borrow Yarns, I uh, bumped into her and I said to her, Lindsay, I'm so nervous because I don't know how people will receive it. You know, my design sense is very simple. My design sense is always just rectangles. I love rectangular shapes and it's very simple. And oftentimes I wonder, Maybe it's too simple. Maybe, you know, other designers will laugh at me. Maybe other designers will say, oh, look at her and her simple designs. So yeah, I have these insecurities. So I, I was very nervous and uh, I was so happy to bump into Lindsay and her mother. And um, they really spoke strength and love into me. And they said, Nancy, don't worry. You're you're fine. You know, your your work is really beautiful. And I really needed to hear that in that moment. Well, how important that reassurance for you, like in general, because you've been designing from day one, pretty much from what I've heard, like as soon as you became a knitter, you became a designer and you've been teaching also. So how important is this feedback that people appreciate your designs and people appreciate your aesthetics and what you teach them? Yeah, so um, the, the, the assurance of or the validation that I do Usually, I don't need it. Usually, I um, I know what I want. I see in my mind's eye what I want to create. And when I first started to design, I designed for nobody else than for me. Because I was so small. I was just a new knitter. And I had just learned how to knit. So I was like, you know, I'm nothing. I'm nothing. Nobody knows me. I'm nothing. I just want to make this thing. I just want to design this thing. And I'm just making it for me. So I wasn't um, I wasn't subjected to the opinions of others. Because first of all, I came here. I, 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 I moved from the Netherlands to the United States of America. I didn't know anybody. I didn't have I didn't have any friends. I, I was not connected with the knitting community. It was just me, me trying to find my way in the United States of America, waiting for my green card, waiting for my work permit. And I was actually very lonely at some point. 
I was very lonely. And when knitting came on my path, um, it 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 really soothed me. And because I couldn't I couldn't I couldn't read patterns, I wanted to just make things, and I couldn't read patterns. And I started to design from the get go. Right. So it was for me. I was not I was not subjected to anybody's opinion, and I didn't get any. I didn't get any um, judgment, but also I didn't get any praise. I was in a zone where there was no judgment, where there was no praise. It was just me, just me and the knitting and the yarn. And it was a beautiful place to be. Yeah. So in on that moment, I didn't I didn't need validation at all. Well, you, when you studied, you studied finance, right? Like you didn't plan to be a knitwear designer early on. Are you surprised by how your life turned out to be? Very much so. Very much so. Um, I am originally from, from my background is economics, economics and business. And I worked in the corporate world. So when I was in that world, when I lived in the Netherlands, I didn't have any creative outlet, you know, uh, knitting, crochet, this creative life yarn it wasn't in my it wasn't in my reality at all the only thing i was thinking about is making a career work hard uh, make my father proud and make a lot of money that was that was my reality and until i until i realized that that didn't make me happy but then comes the question now what now what and I married a New Yorker. I, I went to the United States of America, and in that space of now, what am I going to do? Uh, yarn, yarn came to me, and I started to yes, I started to design. And um, I remember I was in Portland, Oregon, uh, with my husband's work. I was in Portland, Oregon, and I found this little cafe, knit cafe. It doesn't exist anymore. And this, oh, Irina, this was in, this was in 2000, 2006, 2007. Wow, that is how, so long ago, now that I think about it. And I was in this knit cafe and um, I had made little gloves with, um, and it, there was a cable running down the middle of the glove. I had figured out how to position the cable and I had figured out how big to make it. And I was wearing them and I was also knitting them and they're, Next to me, there were uh, a few women also knitting, and they were they were looking at my gloves. So finally, one of them asked me, "Oh, really? I like your I I really like your gloves. What um, how, what is the pattern?" And at that time, I didn't know that most of the knitters, the majority of the knitters need a pattern. I didn't know because I didn't have any rapport with knitters. I was just me. I was very insulated. So so I said to her, oh yeah, you know, you do this, 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 and this, and then you figure out this, this, because I thought every knitter did that. <laughs> and then you figure out that, da, 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 da. so I started talking and she said to me, she said, honey, no, no, I need a pattern do you have a pattern? <laughs> so right at the spot I was like well if you have a piece of paper and a pen I'll write it out for you so that's that was actually the first time that I had contact with another knitter and that this knitter was interested in what I was wearing that was the first time the first time and I was yeah I was kind of like Oh, you like this? Sure. I I'll write I'll write it out for you if you like this. But I was I was um I was surprised. I was really surprised. Well, what's knitting for you nowadays? Knitting for me nowadays has become work. It has become work. And at and at times I long for the days that it wasn't work. At times I long for the days that I could just knit away and um, I didn't have to think about, oh, um, this is going to be a design. If this is going to be a design, I need, I want to keep it very plain and I want to keep it very simple. And then as I am, as I am knitting and as this design is going through my head, I kind of think about how am I going to put this in words? 
So, you know, all these things go through my head, whereas before I didn't have that. Before I could just go, go, go. And it's, you know, I, I miss that at times. I miss it at times. Yeah. Do you ever need just for pleasure, like without writing a pattern? Um, lately, uh, not so much. Not so much lately, but I want to go back to that. I want to go back to just pick up the needles and to just make something and, and not worry about writing the instructions and not worry about, oh, if I, if I do this design element, maybe it's going to be a little bit complicated to explain. So let me not do that. So in a way, um, in a way, my, um, my, my head is, my head is now focused on how other knitters will perceive it before it wasn't like that. So lately I've been thinking about, you know, Nancy, you need to free yourself from that, free yourself from that and just get back to that place where, where nobody knew who you were and you could just, you would just knit. You, would okay, just... you believe, okay, so the, it, it's been like on my mind lately a lot because there are designers that push the difficulty level of the pattern yeah. to like the most uncomfortable place. Yes. Like I'm thinking Jennifer Bill, right? Like every mm -hmm. pattern of hers is mm -hmm. mind bending. Like mm -hmm. I've been test knitting for her a few yes. times and every time I'm like, okay, that's wonderful. I just have zero idea how to knit it. And she's like, here's the pattern, figure it out, right? So through her, I did bird eye Shetland lace. I did uh, fair isle in the flat. I did in uh, interlock. I did uh, noobs. Like I mean, the amount of techniques that she puts into each and every pattern mm -hmm. is like, you know, it's you can make a class on it, yes. and somehow it sells, right? And then yeah. there are designers who make the simplest things and they concern with like, if they gonna make it a little bit more complicated, who's gonna buy? Like, do you think there is clientele for everyone? And do you think like, maybe it's a job of a designer to push the meters out of their comfort zone? Like, where, what's your opinion on that? Well, my, my opinion is, I'll, I'll tell you, Lorena, I, um, I started to design for a uh, for a cashmere company called Jade Sapphire, and I had designed a little glove with a little bow. And at first, I was like, "This is so simple. Who is going to buy this? It's just one rectangle for the hand, then another rectangle for the bow, and then a really tiny little rectangle to put over the bow. So this glove consists at consists of simply three rectangles per hand. Who is gonna buy this? Nobody is going to want to spend dollars on this. This is so simple, I'm not gonna put it out. And I had a conversation with my husband and my husband said, Nancy, put it out, put it out, you know, just just try. And I talked to the to this yarn company uh, and I said, well, I have this, do you think, do you think it will go? Do you think people would be interested because it's so simple, nobody's gonna buy it. And they said, we're gonna put it out because it's the simple things that the majority of knitters want. And they put it out and it became one of their best sellers. So mm -hmm. it's really, there, there, there is something for every knitter. There are, there are so many knitters out there uh, on every level, on every level. And um, I've been knitting in yarn shops. I've been working in yarn shops since 2008. And that's, um, that's about, what, 15 years now. That's 15 years now. And by being so close to the end consumer, the knitter, by being so close to them and listening to them, I I said to myself, you know, there's a place for everybody. There's a place for everybody. And there's a place for really easy patterns, really simple patterns. And there's a place for very intricate patterns. There's um there's something for everybody. And your question, if it is the task of a designer to push people's boundaries, it's uh, that's up to the designer. But I, I don't think so. I don't think so because I don't do that. But there is another designer that will do that. So each designer has their own vision, has their own way of um, has their own way of writing, has their own way of 
putting techniques out there. And for me, I wanted to keep everything simple because I remember when I was a new knitter, I couldn't do those intricate things. Right. And uh, as a new knitter, I wanted to buy simple patterns, simple things. And also my design vision is I like things to be simple. Out of simplicity, out of simplicity, uh, you can create beautiful things. And I've worked with, with designers that have very intricate, uh, very intricate vision on design. Shirley Payton. I worked with Shirley Payton. And when I started to work with her and I did some knits for her, I was like, wow, this woman has so much knowledge and I'm learning so much from her. And she was she was giving me uh, 36 36 uh, row lace patterns were made made with mohair. I had to knit it with mohair. I had to put beads in it. The most intricate intricate uh, lace um, lace uh, pattern, and I could do it. You know, I could do it. So it's not that I cannot do intricacies. Right. I just like to be. I just like to have things very very simple. That is that is my design sense. Well, you've been teaching a lot of classes. What did you learn from your students? What I learned from my students, and also um, it is the knitters that taught me how to write patterns. Uh, because the knitters, I, I would write instructions and the knitters would come to the store and they would say to me, Nancy, I don't understand what you mean with this. What, what does this mean? And uh, then I realized, oh, I'm too far in the design lingo. If I'm too far in the design lingo, the, the knitter wouldn't understand. You know, some some uh, high level knitters will understand, but a new knitter doesn't understand if I word it a certain way. So the knitters have taught me how to write it in a way that they understand it. And um, the knitters have taught me to be, to be very precise, to be very precise with the uh, with my instructions and what is very um, obvious to me is not obvious to the knitter. And, you know, designers, they have, we have different lingos. When we, when we talk to each other, we have a different lingo. It's on a certain level, but when we explain it to the knitter that maybe is not of that level, they won't understand. So you have to word it in a, in, in a very concise and in a very easy and simple way. And it's not that the knitter is that a knitter doesn't understand. It just I just want to hit, I want to hit the knitters that are new, but I also want to hit the knitters that are at a high level. I, I really I really like to hit all levels so that the high level knitter understands, but also the new the new level knitter understands so that they are not intimidated. What's your favorite thing about teaching? My favorite thing about teaching is when I explain something to somebody, and at first this person is nervous, doesn't know exactly how this works, believes that they cannot do it. Oh, no, 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 I cannot do this. This is for high level knitters. This is not for me. I, I'm just a new knitter. And then when I show them how it is done, and when I can do it in a language that they understand and then they get it that's that's so beautiful to me that that is very um that is very rewarding to me uh, for instance i have been um i have been doing one on one zoom meetings with uh with a few knitters uh because i my thing is sweater knitting i love sweater knitting uh, that is my thing. If you if you ask me what is your favorite thing to knit is sweaters. Well, Irina, you're a very uh, experienced knitter. You know that if you go into the area of sweater knitting, you need to understand what gauge is. You need to understand how many stitches per inch does this yarn yields. And I, if I if I'm not on gauge, if I buy the exact yarn what the what the designer wants me to work with, and if if I use the exact same needles that the designer wants me to work with, how come that if I work with the with the material and the and the needles, how come that my that I am not on gauge? Right. Because a knitter needs to understand we all have our blueprint of uh, tension. 
we all have our own blueprint of gaze. If you have a room of 10 knitters and you give them the same yarn, the same needles, and you tell them, cast on 30 stitches and knit for uh, 50 rows and, and cast off and give me back all of your pieces. One will come out big, another one will come out small. And, and if you venture into sweater knitting, you need to understand about gauge and you need to understand how to how to adjust your needle size to get gauge and it is it can be um it can be confusing it can be confusing oh i have nancy i have too many stitches per inch what should i do and then i tell them oh if you have too many stitches per inch you need to go up in needle size and it's very counterintuitive it's very right. counterintuitive and if if you if you tell that to the to the new sweater knitter, they get overwhelmed. They don't really understand. But if I make them do a swatch, and if I if I sit with them and measure their gauge, and their gauge is not is not they're not on gauge, and I say to them, keep this swatch, go home and go up a needle size, do another swatch, and then come back, and then they come back. And they have two swatches. The one that they were not engaged is small. The second one that I use the bigger needle uh, is uh, is bigger. It has a bigger. Uh, it comes out bigger. And for them, and then for them to understand and to see what happens when you go up a needle size or when you go down a needle size, and then the, um, I can see it click. I can I can see like. Ah, now I understand. And that's a beautiful moment for me that they that they finally see it and that they finally understand because this will give them this will give them the knowledge to knit any sweater they want. Right. Well, do you when you teach, like is it your goal to teach a certain technique or is it your goal to sort of teach the tools to learn any technique? Um uh, let's see. I I like to teach techniques. I love to teach techniques. And I also love to explain to my students why you should use a certain needle or why you should use a certain yarn because it will affect it will affect the item that you're that you make. And, and I love to give I love to give my students a deeper understanding of the material and the tools and the techniques, you know, the techniques as well. But also important, I find it that you understand the material that you're working with and the tools that you're working with. What's your personal relationship with swatches? Do you love swatching, hate swatching somewhere? I love, <laughs> I love swatches. I well, have a whole... Okay, tell, tell me, like, what the swatch tells you besides okay. gauge, right? What else can you learn from swatching? The swatch will tell me which fabric the yarn wants to be. You have a ball of yarn, you have a ball of yarn and this ball of yarn has so much potential. You can make anything you want with this ball of yarn, but what are you going to make with it? Are you going to make something that is really tightly knit? That's quite stiff or, going, or are you going to make something that will flow? This, there is information in the yarn and the and that in combination with a certain stitch pattern and that in combination with a certain needle they it will tell you so when i swatch when i start a new design i sometimes have like five swatches same yarn uh different stitches and within the different stitches so say i have something in a particular stitch pattern then I don't I do not make one, I do not, not make one swatch. I make at least three. One on a small needle, bigger needle, bigger needle. And then the same yarn that I use, I'm going to choose a different, a different stitch pattern, and I'm going to do the same thing. One needle, a bigger needle, an even bigger needle. And what I do, and actually I have here something now. I have here a swatch that I'm making. And here I use, and you can't, you can't really see, but here I use needle size number 17. And here I'm using needle size number 15. And for the third one, I'm gonna use needle size number uh, 13. And I just watch how the, I watch how it behaves. I watch what it does. And I literally do this. I literally move my swatch 
and I see what it does. I see how it sways or I watch how it doesn't sway. I watch how it um, stays stiff. And based on that information, a design will click in my head. So a swatch tells me everything. When it comes to your designs, yeah. like what comes first? Do you first come up with the idea of what you want to design or you get inspired by the fabric and then you decide what you want to design with it? Two ways, two ways. Um, I start swatching and then it'll, the swatch will tell me. Or I see something in my mind's eye that with Lily, the piece that Lily was wearing at the Kaleidoscope Fashion Show, I saw that. I saw that immediately. And the yarn that I used was a uh, Noventa as a new yarn by Malabrigo. They had just put it on the market. And actually this is also Noventa. Um, I saw that the yarn came in and I was, I was, of course, I was thinking, oh, I need to make, I need to produce a piece for the fashion show. What yarn am I going to use? And you know, I work at Nitty City. So I, I have all of this yarn at my fingertips. Huh? Also here, I have always yarn at my fingertips. So which one to use, which one to choose? And then this yarn came and I touched it and I looked at it. And I saw the depth, the saturation of the colors. And I was like, this is the yarn. This is the yarn that I'm going to use. And as soon as I touched the yarn, I held it in my hands. I closed my eyes. I saw Lily. I saw a piece that Lily was wearing. So I already saw it. And then, then I'm going to work from that vision. I'm going to choose if I'm going to knit it. I'm going to choose if I'm going to crochet it. I'm going to choose what what stitch pattern exactly I'm going to use. And then I'm also going to choose which, what thickness of a needle or what thickness of crochet hook. But it has to, what I see in my mind's eye, it has to be in harmony with that. Well, talking about Nitty City, do you treat it as your personal stash, so to say? Because yes, you I, always yes. come to work and like pick what you need <laughs> for the next project. And then the continuation of this question, what's on your shelves? How do you decide what comes home with you? <laughs> yes. um, working and I've been working at Nitty City since 2011. Nitty City is my is my home. And also I cannot I cannot mention Nitty City without talking about Pearl, the former owner of Nitty City, Pearl Chin. Uh, Pearl Chin is the mother of Zachary. Uh, Pearl founded the store 17 years ago and Pearl hired me in 2011. And it was, oh, I, I love this woman so much. I loved her so much. She was like a mother to me. And she she made New York City bearable for me because it was very hard for me to uh to adjust to to new york city and uh pearl was pearl was there with open arms and she embraced me and took me uh, into the store and i uh i love her very much so i want to i want to i want to speak lovingly about her and i want to honor her while i talk about nitty city well the stash the stash at nitty city i always joke I always say this is my personal stash. It's not my personal stash, <laughs> but I always joke about it. This this is my personal stash, and um, I feel so lucky. I have all this yarn at my fingertips, and um, uh, uh, Nitty City also uh, lets us um, swatch the yarns. So it's it's like a big big playground for me. Oh, what yarn comes home with me? Oh, Irina, <laughs> I love I love yarn. I uh, love, love, love yarn. When yarn first came into my life, I said to myself, what is this thing? How did I not, how did I not, how was I not interested in yarn before? It really swept me off of my feet. And the first time I, I walked into a yarn shop, I was like, ah, oh, so much beautiful colors, all these, balls of yarns all these skeins of yarn in the most beautiful colors and everything everything feels so soft you know I was just it just swept me off of my feet so I love yarn and how do I decide how do I decide what yarn comes home with me if it takes my breath away and uh, if I hold it and it feels soft and um, if I have visions of uh, what it what it can become then it comes home with me and it's it's really hard to decide so as you can see i have, i have a lot of yarn and it, it makes me happy and 
I'm sitting in the living room, so it's in full display. <laughs> it's in full display. And yeah, it, it's, um, it, it's, it just makes me happy. And when I touch a ball of yarn and the color just mesmerizes me, it sweeps me off of my feet, then it comes home with me. Well, you mentioned at the beginning of our conversation that when you were younger and you were working in the economics and to make, part of the reason was to make your parents proud. Yeah. Is your family proud of you now? Uh, you know, uh, I think so. <laughs> I think so. Um, I, I am a child of, uh, of immigrants. They immigrated from the from Suriname to uh, to the Netherlands, and and my ancestry is from uh, from Indonesia, and the Dutch colonized Indonesia and they colonized Suriname, so I'm a child of immigrants. And when my when my parents emigrated from Suriname to the Netherlands, they they worked very hard. They worked very hard, and um, they wanted. The, their children to have good education, to have higher education, which both me and my brother did. We had really good education, but um, I think that my I think that my father that my I would have made my father really really proud if I would have become maybe somebody big in corporate business and made a lot of money, but. And I believe, I believe, that, and I believe that, and I wanted, I wanted that for him, but I, I didn't want it for me. And if you do something for somebody else, no matter if it's your parent, no matter if it's your husband, no matter if it's your, whatever, if you do it for somebody else and not for you, at some point, you're not going to be happy. And then you have to say to yourself, what am I going to do? Am I going to walk this path to make somebody else happy? Or am, go, or am I going to walk this path to, to fulfill me, to make me happy? So you have to make that decision. And I made that decision. And I, you know, I, I am not this high flyer in corporate business. I don't, I don't earn loads and loads of money that I could have earned in corporate business, but would that have made me happy? And I think what make me doing something that I'm happy about, that is what makes my parents proud. Right. When you come to place like Vogue Meeting, do you is that like a place to network? Is that a place to show your designs, or is it your playground just to be among the people like yourself? Yes, it's my <laughs> playground. It's it's connecting with members of the community and you know me when I saw you at NDC. I didn't know who you were. <laughs> I saw you and I was like, oh my. God, look at what she's wearing. I need to take a picture. It's a beautiful piece that this lady is wearing. And I, I said to you, what a beautiful piece. And then you explained to me, your friend made it. And then we were talking about it. That, that is what, that is, yeah, that is the, that is so beautiful to me to, to see people, members of our community and to see what they're wearing and everybody is smiling. Everybody is in their happy place. That is the most important thing for me and also to connect with people that you know it's an online world that we live in and especially mm -hmm. since COVID hit uh, everybody was um, pushed in their homes and we were connecting online and this was the first time that we could like really see each other and feel each other and feel each other's energy and I, I, I think that is what really would really um, touches me the most. How organized are you in your designing career? Like, do you have everything planned for the next few months? Very disorganized. <laughs> I'm very disorganized, um, and I should be. I should be more organized because always at the last minute, I'm like, oh, I should have done something for Valentine's. Or, oh, I should have done something for a Rhinebeck sweater, you know, when it's uh, <laughs> when it's September, uh, people start start asking me, Nancy, do you have a Rhinebeck sweater? And I'm like, oh, once again, I'm too late with my Rhinebeck sweater. So I'm very disorganized. I do not learn. I don't learn. 
and I should be more organized. And uh, maybe one day I will be. Well, do you have really... like, do you have a dream, the ambition of like where you wanna, where you see yourself like another five years from now? Ah, uh, yes. My my dream, my dream is to show other knitters that they can be independent from a pattern. That's my dream. Look, I am a pattern writer. I write instructions, but my dream is to show others you can do it without a pattern. If I show you in a very simple way how this is done, you're going to be like, ah, I can do it. So that is my biggest dream to, to and, 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 and as somebody that sells patterns and then write patterns is kind of contradictive, right? Because I need to sell patterns to make my money. But my biggest dream is that I can make somebody independent from a pattern that I can show somebody, these, these are the steps that you take. And um, this is where the creative process comes into play. And you can put your own energy in this creative process. And then you realize that you don't need a pattern. That's my biggest dream that I can, um, that I can show people that. Also, also my dream is to, um, what, what, what more is my dream? Yes, I, I basically is to show people that they can that they can make anything they want. That that just if you dream about it, if you envision it, and you and you and you see it and you feel it, that you can bring it into reality. Anything you want to do, really, anything you want to do, and that there are no inhibitions. And um, sometimes I I I hear Nita saying, "Oh, I could never do that." And then I ask them, why do you why why do you believe that? Right. Oh, I'm just I'm just the new I'm just new. I cannot do that. I cannot knit a sweater. And then I say to them, do you know how to knit in the round? Yes, I've made hats. Do you know how to work with double pointed needles? Yes, I know how to work with double pointed needles because I need it for the top of my head. And then and and then I say to them, well, if you can knit in a round and if you can work with double pointed needles, what is holding you back from making a sweater? What is holding you back? You know, and then if I can, if I can inspire them, or if I can, mm, if I can put them, if I can put them in action so that they actually make the sweater, and then they come into the store and they show me their sweater, and they're so proud and they feel so accomplished. Oh, that is so beautiful. That's so beautiful to me. Well, I want to ask you also one more thing about the kaleidoscope show. So to me, the most beautiful thing about it was that there were people from like different places, different countries, different yes. um, cultural backgrounds. Yeah. Do you get inspired by that? Like your own background and also being in the new country again and seeing all this like melting pot of the ideas, yeah. you get inspired by that. Yes, I get very much inspired by that. I am curious about uh, the background of people. I'm curious where they're from. I'm curious where their parents are from. I'm curious. Um, I'm curious about uh, the culture, their culture. I'm curious about the foods. I also, I always want to know everything. I want to know everything. And uh, the one of the designers uh, is called Alex. Rain also Alex creates and uh, he brought a piece of his culture onto the runway uh, from from his background and um, I, I love to see that I really love to see that it gives them um, it it gives a uh, it gives um it gives spice it gives color you know and for you to for you to to be able to put something of your culture uh, right there for for people to see and for people to uh, to feel it. I I find that very very beautiful. Yeah, I mean I also like the Duke of Nico's. Uh, yes, honors, like they were mind blowing also to see. Yes, that, like, it's it's fantastic. Interpretation, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's fantastic. And people bring, people bring something, that is part of them, their identity, and they show it, uh, and they show it with so much pride. And they show it with so much love and you can feel it. 
Yeah. Well, I'm so glad I got to meet you at Vogue Knitting, and I'm so glad you were a guest of my channel today and that we got to know you a little bit better. Same. Thank you, Same. Thank you so very much, Nancy. Thank you, Irina, for having me. And I'm so happy. I, I I'm so happy I saw you when you came, when you walked by the booth. I was like, oh, look at this lady wearing such a beautiful piece. <laughs> I'm happy I uh, I started talking to you. Yeah, same. <laughs> okay. Thank you.